Hi, John. I want to explain this particular interval uh, called the tritone. Um, first of all, it sounds like this. Okay, and it's made out of three tones. That's why it's called the tritone. There's one, two, and three. Okay, and it, it doesn't have any um, harmonic center, um, but we can create a harmonic center by adding some other notes and that creates a harmonic center around G, the note G at the bottom there. But then those notes that I've just added, um, I can just raise by a semitone. And if I just raise them by a semitone, it's a very small change, I actually end up with a chord which has a root of C sharp, which is a tritone away from G. It's a very small change to make quite a major change to the sound. And if I go up another semitone, there we go. I end up with another chord back on G. So, so that bass, that tritone sound at the bottom, hasn't changed. And because it's a tritone, it's also symmetrical, so I can do a similar thing, a tritone away. So that is a chord based on C-sharp. That is a chord on G again. And this is another chord on C sharp. Okay, so I want to stay with the sound of the tritone, but we can build up another tritone on top of it to create a diminished chord and that can have a number of possibilities. So here it is resolving to C. Note how the sound is always the same, it's redundant. It is resolving to E flat. Here it is resolving to F sharp. And here it is resolving to A. So the same sound, it's, it's the, the ambiguity comes, it seems to come from the redundancy of the sound and the fact that many different contexts can surround the sound and give it a different meaning. Okay, so we can also keep the right hand melody the same and shift the harmony. There we go, so the bass moves down. So effectively that means the redundancy is in the melody now. So now what I'm doing is actually keeping the right hand stable and just sliding the bass down. And do the same trick further up. Just sliding the left hand and then obviously we can see.
set on something that now we're in a definite definitely we're in a key um, but all I have to do is to bring back that tritone and I can start to shift the harmonies around again so there we go so again we're in a, this weird sort of Neverland again. So again these very small changes in in you know between semitones. the bass down again and we end up with this nice scrunchy thing. The redundancy isn't just a matter of notes being repeated, it's also a matter of notes generating patterns which express a particular harmony and particularly where there are many different kinds of patterns which interweave with one another which express the same harmony. So it's effectively a way of saying the same thing in many different ways which is another definition of redundancy. And that basically is what goes on in the Bach cello suites. So what have we got here? We've got um, a pattern where we've got a sort of uh, jump. Ba -dum, ba -dum. And then you've got this twiddly bit at the top. Ba -da 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 -da. And then you've also got the rhythm. Ba -da 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 -da. But it's all articulating a harmony. So here is the same thing with the chords played on top. And you might think, if we've just got chords, you might say, well, why not just play the chords? Why have all this elaboration of pattern which interweaves and, but actually basically just says what the chord is? But if you did that, it would be very boring. And the beauty of the music is in the fact that Bach has managed to weave all these different patterns which basically say the same thing. They're basically redundant patterns. But then we have to reckon with the cohesion of the whole thing. The fact that this is a piece of music, it's, it feels as if it's got a cohesion about it. That all of these patterns are somehow brought together and they give us some sort of glimpse of some sort of totality. Some idea of, uh, well, what Bone might call the implicate order. I think if you take a load of redundant layers and you overlay them, there is a point at which you see a kind of light. Um, you can imagine it as different filters in light. And I don't think this is a deception. I think this is a real thing, which um, perhaps gives us an insight as to where we may be deceiving ourselves in other aspects of our discourse as we think about reality.